In this video, we're gonna share some tips on how to get the shot that no one else is getting. This is gonna spice up your travel photography, street photography, landscape photography, really any types of photography in general. And this video is sponsored by Zeiss Camera Lenses. So tip number one is to be a meticulous. One of the best mindset to be in that will really separate you from others is by paying attention to details. While most people would take a shot and leave, just stick around and look for things that someone can easily overlook. Try to take the same object or subject and get as many different perspectives as possible. Take for example here of the statues of Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse. I can take a full frontal shot like most people would, but I saw that there were some pretty flowers around them, so I decided to see what I can do to incorporate the flowers. With a wide angle lens, I got low and used the flowers as a foreground element. By doing so, I was able to get some clouds in this shot as well. It was completely unintentional, but it helped make the picture look a lot better with the sunset sky in the background. But I didn't stop there. I went behind the statue to apply the same ideas with the low angle and flower foregrounds and got somewhat of a cool silhouette. This also showed less of the busy crowd in the scene. And had I waited just a little bit longer, I might have been able to get a much emptier shot. We also attempted a few more ideas, but ultimately I think this side profile shot of Walt and Mickey was my favorite from the set. This concept of meticulousness is what my friend Lucas calls it, working the scene, in which we are persistent on trying to make our shot better and better by trying different things. For more examples on working the scene, I highly recommend watching my video on being a better photographer. So one of the best ways of being meticulous and capturing details is by using a telephoto lens, something like an 85 millimeter or 70 to 200, or if you can afford it and can bring it around, a 400 or 600 millimeter lens. Now you may think it's silly, but those shots are gonna separate you from the crowd, quite literally. I personally like to bring the 135. It's a great compromise in terms of size, weight, and distance. Especially when it comes to shows like the Disneyland Parade, most people would be filming or photographing with their smartphones. And even if their phones have those crazy super zoom capabilities, the quality just isn't on par as shooting with an actual telephoto lens. With an actual telephoto lens, we're able to hone in on the expressions of the performers and even get a better look at the floats and costume designs. And not only does a telephoto lens give you a distance advantage, but also subject and background separation. Another trick to show less of the crowd is to just simply blur them out. By shooting at a faster aperture like f2.8 or 1.8, we're able to focus more on the subject of interest than the background itself. And don't forget to take the big picture. Now I know it sounds like it's going against the last two point I was trying to make, which may seem like I'm implying don't take any standard wide boring shot. No, please do take those wide boring shots. These types of shots help establish a scene and helps you build your story. You can have a bunch of close-up shots of all the details in the scene, but without the bigger picture, it's hard to feel any attachment as a viewer when we look at your photos. When you compile an album and show a wide scene along with some close-up details, it will help elicit a more powerful emotional attachment. Another great tip is only photographing during a certain time of the day. The difference between shooting high noon and shooting around morning or closer to the evening is huge. High noon photos can look super contrasty with harsh shadows, which isn't a bad thing, it is a style on its own. But for the sake of getting better photos right out of the gate is to shoot around golden hour. It's almost guaranteed you will get really good colors and glow in your photos. Plus, by planning when you'll actually take photos, you can enjoy your vacation even more with your friends and family. During the hours of high noon, you can enjoy all of your outdoor activities, and once it's closer to golden hour, break away for a bit and go do some sunset photography. Now, if you've ever been out traveling or just simply going to a local popular spot in your area, you know going out smack dab in the middle of the day is like the worst idea ever. There's just simply way too many people trying to take a selfie for their next Instagram photo and getting in your shot. <clears throat> so one of the best ways to uh, try to avoid this is by simply showing up early or staying out really, really late. Getting up early can pay off if it means getting an epic sunrise, or even stay till late to get an empty shot. This is where you can be creative with night shots. For example, long exposure. This technique can help eliminate any lingering crowd, resulting in a shot where the spot 
looks empty. And believe it or not, long exposure is incredibly easy to do. All you have to do is just set your ISO to 100, then set your shutter speed between 15 seconds to 30 seconds. Then set your aperture value till you have the proper exposure reading. It should be 0, 0 on the screen. You can, of course, over or under expose depending on what looks better and right to you. And lastly, put your camera in a 2 second timer and take a shot. The important thing when it comes to long exposure is to not to touch the camera while it's doing the long exposure. And after it's done, you should have a pretty epic looking photo. By the way, it's completely okay if people are walking into your shot while the long exposure is happening. So long as they're not lingering around one spot during the duration of your long exposure, they will not be in your photo. However, if they're swinging around with a lightsaber, then uh, that's, that's gonna be a problem. Oh, and if you need more tips on how to shoot better low light and night photography, check out my video linked right up here. Tag me on Instagram at Jason D. Mia, the shot that you got that no one else got. And let me know in the comments down below what other tips you have for others to get a better photo. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.